Good day, A level students. Today, we drive into the dynamic worlds of energy and respiration. Our explorations will unravel the intricate process that power life itself from microscopic mechanism within cells to the broader understanding than how living organism harness and utilize energy. Get ready to embark on a journey through the biological intricacies that sustain life in our planet. Energy in living organism. ATP stands for adenosine transphosphate. It is phosphorylated. It has similar structure to nucleotides that make up RNA, but it has three phosphate groups attached to it. ATP is used as energy currency in all living cells. When its molecule hydrolyzes, losing one phosphate group, some energy is released and used by cells. In this process, adenosine triphosphate converted to adenosine diphosphate. Cells use energy for different purposes. One is for synthesis of protein and other large molecules from small one. Uh, use energy as an active transport of ions and molecules across cell membrane. And also cells use energy in the process of transmission of nerve impulses for movement like muscle contraction, production of heat to maintain body temperature. Each cell makes its own ATP. ATP releases one packet of energy during hydrolysis. Glucose contains too much energy, so a lot would be wasted if cells use glucose molecule as immediate source of energy. And all cells make ATP during respiration. Respirations, all cells obtain usable energy through respiration. Respiration is oxidation of energy containing organic molecules such as glucose known as respiratory substrate. The energy released from this process is used to combine ADP with inorganic phosphate to make ATP. Respiration consists of aerobic or anaerobic. In both cases, glucose or another respiratory substrate is oxidized. In aerobic respiration, oxygen is involved and substrate oxidized completely, releasing much of energy. Meanwhile, in anaerobic respiration, oxygen is not involved and the substrate is only partially oxidized. Only small proportions of the energy is contained is released. Let's look into different types of process. Coenzyme is the respiration involved coenzyme called NAD and FAD. A coenzyme is a molecule which is required for an enzyme to catalyze a reaction. Coenzymes are reduced, meaning that it will add hydrogen and reduce NAD during a respiration process. Meanwhile, aerobic, glucose, and other respiratory substrate is split to release carbon dioxide as a waste product. The hydrogen from glucose is combined with atmospheric oxygen, and this releases a large amount of energy, which is used to drive the synthesis of ATP. Meanwhile, glycolysis is the first stage of respiration. It takes place in the cytoplasm, and a glucose hexose sugar molecule is phosphorylated as 2 ATP donate phosphate. And it produces an exos biphosphate molecule which is split into two triosphosphate molecules. Each triphosphate converted to pyruvate molecule, and this involves the removal of hydrogen, which taken by coenzyme and AD, and removal of hydrogen is oxidation reaction. During this process, triphosphate are added to ADP to produce small yield of ADP. And overall, two molecules of ADP are used and four are made during glycolysis of one more 
glucose molecule, making a net gain of 280 pins per glucose. Let's look into the process of glycolysis, the curve cycles, and electron transport. Cell respiration is a process by which cells extract, extract energy from nutrients from what you eat, typically glucose, and convert it into ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is served as the primary energy currency of cells. So the process occurs in three main stages, which is glycolysis, the curve cycles, and the electron transport. Glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm, whereby glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvate and generate a small amount of ATPs and NADH. And the curve cycles is a citric acid cycle occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, and each pyruvate is further broken down, releasing carbon dioxide. And it produces an ADH and FADH2, reduced form of FAD, which carry high energy electron. And electron transport change for ADC is located on the inner mitochondrial membrane. The electron from FADH, FADH2, move through a series of protein complexes. And energy from electron movement is used to pump proton across the membrane creating an electrochemical gradient, and ATP is generated as proton flow back through ATP synthesis, synthesis in a process called chemoosmosis. And the oxygen is the final electron receptor from the water. As an overall, cells' respiration maximizes the extraction of energy from glucose yielding a significant amount of ATP. The complex oxidation of one molecule of glucose in aerobic condition result in the production of about 38 ATP molecule. And anaerobic respiration in the absence of oxygen involves different pathways like fermentation and yield fewer ATP molecule. This is a process of anaerobic respiration trying to explain when there is an absence of oxygen, prevent the conditions of oxidative phosphorylation. Without oxygen as the final electron acceptor, in the electron transport chain, the process comes to a halt, And this will lead to the accumulation of reduced NADH and FADH2, preventing the regeneration of NAD and FAD which are necessary for the continuation of glycolysis and the curve cycles. Consequently, this central energy producing pathways are disrupted and cellular ATP production is significantly reduced. Let's look into the process of lactic pathway, ATP yield in aerobic and anaerobic respiration, respiratory substrate and respiratory cohesion. Lactic pathway in mammals, the pyruvate is removed by converting it to lactase. The lactase that is produced usually in muscles diffuses into the blood and carried in solution in blood plasma to the liver. The existence of oxygen allows liver cells to convert it to pyruvate. Extra oxygen required after exercise has finished and this is known as oxygen depth. When the exercise is finished, oxygen is available again. Some of pyruvate in the liver cells is oxidized through the new reaction, the third cycles, and the electron change. Some pyruvate is converted to glucose in liver cells. Glucose is released into the blood or converted to glycogen and stored. It depending in aerobic and anaerobic respiration, is only small amount of ATPs are produced when one glucose molecule undergoes anaerobic respiration, meaning that only glycolysis completed the, the Krebs cycles and oxidative phosphorylation, which produce most ATP, do not take place.
the precise number of molecules of ATP produced in aerobic respiration of one glucose molecule varies between organisms and different cells. Glucose is not the only respiratory substrate. Carbohydrate lipids protein can be used as respiratory substrate. Lipids provide twice more energy per gram as compared to carbohydrate or protein. And also lipids contain more hydrogen atoms than carbohydrate and protein molecules. Hydrogen is very important. It's a very useful and it is used to generate ATP. Many cells in the human bodies are able to use a range of different respiratory substrates. Like brain cells can only use glucose, heart muscles preferentially uses fatty acid. So the respiratory equation is actually measuring the value of oxygen is a good idea of which respiratory substrate the cell in an organism are using. So the formula to calculate the respiratory equations is volume of carbon dioxide given out divided, divided by volume of oxygen taken in. And you can get RQ for different substrate undergoing aerobic respiration. Like carbohydrate, RQ is equal to 1. Lipid, RQ equals to 0 0.7. And protein, RQ is 0 0.9. So the value stated here is for aerobic respiration, yeah? And if a cell of an organism is respiring anaerobically, then no oxygen is being used. With that being said, that's all for today's presentation. Hope this presentation will help you giving the ideas about energy and respiration. And please don't forget to subscribe to John Stamila. YouTube channel. Hope to see you in the next presentation.